The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. Well, we're going to start out the show like we usually do, looking at the DAX. Pretty much a non-event compared to what's happening in the rest of the markets. But, uh, you know, that could change, you know, very interestingly, as it usually does. Because remember, anything that can go up 500 points can come down 500 points. Folks, keep in mind that uh, today is Jimmy, tell it like it is, 20 man's birthday. I met JT back in 1965 in the old uh, Clayton Commodity Brokerage office there at the Howard Hughes Building on Wilshire Boulevard. And uh, that's where uh, Roy Longstreet himself used to come in there. And uh, that was his company because he was out of Clayton, Missouri. And uh, anyway, that's how Jimmy and I have been, God, we've been friends for 53 years. Boy, that's hard to believe. But today's his birthday. The little dude is, uh, he's 74 today. So everybody wish him a happy birthday. He's a really, really great guy. I wanted to uh, bring something to your attention that I had prepared, and here it is. I just wanted to get this out. Someone's asked me a question about how I made so much money back in the uh, the early 60s. I took a few thousand bucks and ran it up to about a million, too. But that was back in the old days, folks. Uh, you know, we didn't have the CFTC or anything like that, but the commodities were going crazy. I mean, beans at one time were selling for three bucks a bushel in 1972. They hit $12.90 a bushel. And I was basically buying the 16 and 18 day cycle lows from the old Hearst book that came out in 69. You know, he was saying that nominal cycle was there and it, and it did. It lasted for three years. The problem is it topped sometime in January of 74, which led to the October. October crash of that year in the stock market that took everything down, including me, but it was absolutely a blessing in disguise. From there, I, I learned, the, I had the Gartley book, and I finally had to study it to understand what I had done wrong, and that's pretty much, uh, you know, the story of it. But I wanted to bring this one chart to your attention. It comes from uh, one of our listeners across the pond over there in uh, the UK, and uh, <clears throat> this is a uh, pattern that is uh, in the market here that I think would be very interesting to look at. This is basically the FTSE folks. And uh, you can see this one, two, three, four, five. This is called the expanding or broadening triangle pattern. Uh, Gartley referred to that as the T6 in his, uh, in his uh, book. Uh, pages 200 to 250 of that 600 page book are really related to the patterns. And that's what I did. I would I would uh, print out those patterns, uh, you know, in the old Xerox machine at Don Mack's office, and then I would study them, you know, one after another. And, of course, I, I got locked on to the page 222 and 221, which was the Gartley pattern, and that led to some of the others. But all the, all the patterns that we look at are in that book. There, there's not one pattern that I've never seen that has never been in that book. But this was a very interesting one. I believe it was 19, I think it was about 19, late, uh, early 90s, maybe 90, 89 or 90, uh, Wells Wilder, a very famous and uh, professional trader out of North Carolina, came out with the reverse point wave. And it was pretty much what this was pattern was. It was a one, two, three, four, five expanding triangle. And you, you know, you sell at 0.5 and then you look for the market to go down and make a 1.618 expansion of the four five move. And that's what, uh, that's what they're trying to, to tell you in that particular pattern. But uh, I did each of those. And uh, then, you know, the real, the real change of all this happened in 2000 when Andrew Lowe came out with his book the non-random walk down Wall Street, where he proved empirically that these patterns, not only were they mathematically correct, but they repeated with regularity. Well, repeating, that's an oxymoron, but they um, they they also had a probability associated with it. There was a positive expectation that led there to being predictable within limits. And the key there is within limits, because there's nothing that is uh, 100%. But that's how I did it. I, you know, went through those patterns and uh, 
you know, the book at that time, the Gartley book, was basically unavailable. Uh, it didn't become available until, I believe, 1983. Billy Jones, who had been my customer at Drexel, was running Gambert Land Publishing up in uh, Pomeroy, Washington, and he had made arrangements with the the uh, the uh, people from um, uh, Gartley's uh, estate. And, boy, it was a, really a mess, messed up one because... He died in 1969 and uh, didn't leave a will, and there was a, a mistress and an ex-wife, and a, oh, it was a real disaster, so it was hard to get any rights, but he finally got it uh, to be pr produced, and he brought it out, I believe, at $100, and it's not easy to produce a 500-and-some page book, so that brought the price down from 1500 to 100 bucks. but not many people even bought it at that, so... We'll, we'll see what's going on. Yeah, Deutsche, Bar Deutsche Bank is still uh, going down. I, I don't see any hope for that bank, but, you know, they surprise me quite a bit. The one that looks real interesting today, folks, is the, uh, the crude oil. Because, well, there's a couple that look pretty interesting. Uh, one in particular, uh, and that is the crude oil. Let's just get this up here because we've been relatively bearish on that for quite some time. And I'd like to just to point out for, for you on this, if you'll notice this crude oil, uh, we had the big top up there at 72. That's where we had the uh, butterfly pattern. Uh, then we broke down. We made a 382 retracement up there at that 68 to 80 area for about 10 seconds during a report. And now we've come down and we're sitting right at the 78% level this morning at 64. Uh, 16, I believe, is uh, right near the, the exact number. Uh, the last price, I think, was 64.49 or something. But the time down in these moves have been pretty much equal ever since March, April, May, and also another one here in June. So this should be really good support here uh, in the uh, in the crude oil because failing that, you're, you're going to be looking at a very large ABCD pattern. The first leg of that ABC pattern went from 72 to 66. That was $6, and he rallied up to 68. You take six from that, that takes you to 62. And, uh, you know, it could easily do that because uh, this market has had one heck of a run over the past few years, and it's very, very oversold right now. But we're still at a point that is uh, relatively – good support around that $64 a barrel level uh, in the oil. Whether that holds or not, you know, certainly, you know, remains to be seen. We don't know for sure on any of these things whether they're going to hold or not, but that's primarily what we're watching. Uh, we've had a request to take a quick look at Bitcoin, and I'll bring this up here, let you folks take a look at it, and you'll see uh, this basically just is showing you that the uh, $69.90 per share that we made about eight days ago was right at the 78% retracement. We're about 700 points above that right now, but we really need the um, the market to get moving higher in order to get it moving. Yes, I see Twitter is up 4%. When I heard this morning that it was replacing Monsanto and the S&P 500, I almost fainted because I couldn't believe that Monsanto, that great, great uh, chemical company that uh, brought us uh, monosodium glutamate, <laughs> was uh, going out of the S&P 500 for a, uh, for a uh, what do they call those, social media stocks. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. That's just my two cents for no guests today, folks. You got me for the whole hour. If you have any questions, it's 877-927-6648. Thanks for the nice mentions about uh, Bill Meridian's show yesterday. I really enjoyed it. He's certainly a smart guy and really like to have him on. So we'll take a break here and get back to some of these other charts to take a look at. The Taz Profile Scanner Plus, developed by John Logan and his team, is a standalone piece of software that can change the way you trade. Let the Taz Profile Scanner work for you by scanning over 5,000 financial instruments such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. Right now, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Taz Profile Scanner Plus right at TFNN.com. And when you sign up, you gain instant access to John Logan 
Logan's most recent webinar, How Price, Volume, and Time Make Market Profile So Unique. This hour-long webinar with John Logan will walk you through the most powerful features of the scanner and how you can use it to become a more successful and profitable trader. You pay absolutely nothing for 30 days while you try out this software risk-free. For more information on the Taz Profile Scanner and to get your 30-day free trial today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance, David White's daily market letter, gives you trade recommendations based on David's proprietary power law vector indicator that put the odds of success overwhelmingly in your favor. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stop price for each stock and option trade. David combines his years of trading experience along with his background in technology and computing to offer his subscribers his take on the markets on a daily basis. Every trading day by 9.30, David publishes his morning issue of the Path of Least Resistance, along with updates sent out throughout the week whenever there is new, actionable trading information. All new subscribers receive a 30-day, no-questions-asked, money-back guarantee. To sign up for David White's daily trading newsletter right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com, and you'll find the Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Larry takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Okay, we're back, folks, and I've asked, been asked to take a look at the copper chart. And as you can see here, there's something very important to look at on copper, and that is you'll notice that we have a potential there for a big ABCD to the downside. That was negated when we had the double test of the 0.618 retracement down there at 1301 per pound. And, of course, now we're 17 cents above that uh, level. So that was telling you that that was an extremely important area of support. That that's what you're looking for is multiple confirmation and that's really what you're looking if you take the time and do the work yourself as 20 minutes always says defy human nature you'll notice that the time sequence on those down moves are very very similar which uh, also helps a great deal we have another market today that is related to the gold and silver that might interest you and that is the the platinum market we don't trade this very often but if you'll notice over the past uh, six weeks we have now made a 61% retracement of the low that we made back on May the 21st. Um, that was also the 21st. That was a uh, big triple bottom, as you can see there, uh, on the half-hour chart. But we did complete. Here again, you're seeing a double ABCD pattern here in the platinum at uh, 893. We're trading at about 898 right now. We've rallied a little bit off of that. But we've made two ABCD patterns at that point coming in right at the 61% level. So that's trying to tell us that there's some very strong support here at the 893 level. Of course, below 890, that support would be uh, dissipated and you'd have to look at something else. But that's pretty much what you're watching. On the platinum chart, you'll notice those, those cycles that are at the high there. That's nothing more than that 135 pattern that Roy and Bill Longstreet uh, introduced me to back in uh, 1983. That is a cycle where you have lower tops and they're coming in at fib numbers and that's really what you're what you're trying to do when you when you see those you're trying to put those together so that you have time and price so that you don't don't have to risk too much in order to get it now someone's asked a question how do you enter well you wait till you get to the exact price that you want to get 
uh, at that level, and they just put it on, and you risk three percent. You know, like three percent in platinum, you're going to have to risk. Uh, well, yeah, that's thirty dollars. You don't want to do that. You risk about three tenths of one percent, which would be around six bucks in platinum. So you wouldn't have to risk too much if that was correct. So those are the kind that you look for, where you can actually control your risk. You know, to some uh, to some degree. And and believe me, it's it's degrees. You just never know which ones are going to. Uh, to work and which ones aren't. I wanted to point out this uh, three drive pattern uh, in the platinum because this is a really important one that we had back here. Uh, you'll notice that that uh, we had that bear trap down there. We had a beautiful cycle bottom. This was the kind of cycle that I that I traded off during 1968 through 1993. Those are the types of cycles. This was like a 109-day cycle. You notice that it bottomed right at two two times that, which is 218, and that went on for a long time because all the markets were bullish. Everything was bullish, and uh, especially the grains and everything that grew was going crazy because of uh, 1972. We got the news that the uh, Russians were buying, you know, the great great grain robbery. Well, hell, they've been buying for three and a half years. They just told us about it in 1972. So that's the main thing. Now, we have another market that finished a real interesting pattern yesterday. This is the hourly chart of the uh, New York Stock Exchange Index. Of course, it looks a thousand percent different than the NASDAQ. But as you can see here, we've come down and uh, rallied back up to a 61% retracement, made another little Gartley on the hourly chart here. This is the same chart that we're looking at when we watch the Dow Jones Industrial Average. It's doing the same thing. The um, the E-mini S&P uh, did an interesting thing uh, last night, and I wanted to bring that one to your attention. I think this is it right here, and certainly it is. Let's get up. This is when we were talking about yesterday and watching the importance of 27.51, and the high was 27.51.75. Uh, we sold off a tiny bit from that level, but that was an exact 7.86 from the high that we made back on May the 6th. So whether that means anything or not remains to be seen. But the market is still strong today. And we've, you know, the NASDAQ has gone into areas where we're near the old tops. Uh, we're very, very close to the old tops in both the composite and in the uh, NASDAQ 100. That doesn't change the fact that those major stocks in that component are still making topping patterns. They just haven't got the news yet. <laughs> Neither have I. But anyway, we'll see if that's going to mean anything longer term. But that's what we're watching this morning because we've got some key things that look look pretty interesting. I'll, I'll go into this. I have a couple of questions here uh, regarding the grain markets, but I'll, I'll cover those uh, when we get back from the break because, you know, we had that big move uh, into that uh, full moon. Excuse me, into the yeah, excuse me into the full moon. Now we're waiting for that new moon to come up, which will be uh, around the 11th, I believe, of. Um, of June. So that'll be the early part of next week. I believe Monday or Tuesday is the day we want to be trying to look at the um, the grains to cover the short and to, uh, you know, go long. That's what I would think. 613, close enough, Marshall. Thank you very much. And I appreciate you letting me know about the, uh, the Monsanto because I don't follow those things, as you well know. By the way, Marshall Kelly has had a, has had a miraculous recovery. We thought we were going to lose him two days ago. And yesterday he was up full of old, old vinegar and whatever because he was laughing and joking and had a really strong voice and was able to walk and everything. So at 95, uh, it's amazing how he, how he can bounce back. But uh, what, a, what a fine human being is. Those of you that have been to Arizona, most of you have always met Kelly because we always took uh, him to dinner with us and also his wife, who he's married to for 66 years. Uh, they were our very, very good friends. And, of course, we lost Virginia four years ago. But Kelly's still hanging in there. God love him. All right, let's move on here to take a look at um, the Hang Seng. We've had a couple questions about that. It hasn't, hasn't really done very much, folks. Uh, this is from one of our friends over in Hong Kong. Uh, basically, you know, we've been in these lower tops and through here. It really has been pretty much inactive compared to can compare the indexes that we're having here in the United States, much like we're seeing in, in the UK and also in Germany. Both of those have not done very much. I mean, the FTSE made a new high, but that was before we went nuts in the NASDAQ. And, you know, we'll see. But the NASDAQ, remember, folks, that's done with about 20 stocks in that NASDAQ 100. So it doesn't take much to get that thing moving with Microsoft and Apple. And Apple made the big ABCD pattern at 193 yesterday. Um, 
that was one that we've been waiting for for a long time, and uh, we gapped up there and left a gap. So whether it's going to continue from that gap level remains to be seen, but it's certainly moving uh, quite a bit. I've had a couple of questions about the Treasury bonds, and I, I really think all we've done in the Treasury bonds, folks, is to uh, you know have a very, very small rally. I mean, well, it wasn't small if you were short, but it was six points. And I believe that, you know, we're getting ready. If you remember yesterday, we were talking about the importance of this first ABCD correction in the Treasury bonds. And we got right down, uh, you know, to the um, that 144 level. The low was uh, 144.01, I believe, last night, or 143 and change, I believe. And we've rallied up uh, quite a bit from that level. So uh, that ABCD is complete. Now we want to see what the rally is going to be like in the bonds to tell us you know, what the next level is going to be. But the open interest is certainly telling us that there's not a lot of new buyers coming in, much like we're seeing in the stock indices. Uh, even though the NASDAQ is going up, the amount of interest that's going up in that thing is pretty much insignificant. So we'll see. Thank you, uh, Dudette. 877-927-6648. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full custom capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and I've posted a chart from southern Italy, and I would like for you to take a look at this because um, Mr. EJ over there, one of our good friends and one of our students, has shown us this pattern 
that uh, you'll notice that point two, which was the 1282 uh, level, uh, could also lead to a three drive to a bottom pattern, which would be down around the 1265 level, which would bring you into the 78% level. That would be a perfect three drive to a bottom if that occurs. Now, the $64 question is, will we break that 1282 to get there. Right now, all we've done is gone down to test the 78% level down around 1292. We're trading around 1297. Very, very little activity here compared to the rest of the markets. It really is. And silver's doing the same thing also. So there's very little action going in the metals. I think that's going to change uh, relatively soon. But whether we make one more bottom down here or maybe more than one bottom in gold, we'll have to uh, wait and see. But that 1282 is very, very strong support. Support. And, of course, breaking that would take us down to that 78% level. The thing that is questionable about the gold move is the fact that we've been down here for two weeks now. And each time we've been in a gold move before with a cycle low like that, it came out of here, you know, like a rabbit. If we just take a look here at the daily chart going back a couple of years, you'll be able to see, well, yeah, almost two years, you'll be able to see when we made those bottoms in July of 2016 and 2017, one in July, then another one in December, you'll notice that those were uh, absolutely uh, explosive moves. This one's not explosive. We've been here for two weeks, and it hasn't gone anywhere. The thing that's important about it is, is the fact that it's a 61% retracement of that low back in December, and it's also a 50% retracement of the low from back in July. So there's double numbers there. Maybe it's just waiting to catch its breath. The question is, why hasn't it moved up? That's what I'm concerned about. And uh, I, anytime that we get a lot of strength in this market, I will know that that bottom is in, and then we'll really know where we are. Look at the move in December of last year, folks, uh, the daily. It went up for like 13, 14 days in a row without even – we happen to be long that, I remember. But the the uh, that's what you'd like to see, but we're not seeing that this time in the gold. That That's a big question, market. Uh, because we had the bottom come in right when it should have, uh, right around the May 15th. And here we are, you know, two and a half weeks out into the future. And we're, uh, what, uh, we're $15 higher. That's nothing. So my assumption is maybe that bottom is not in. And that's what concerns me about that. If it were moving, I would be I would be saying, uh, like oh, Ernie used to say at Hollywood Park, que ora es de oro y le cunos tus manos. I love this horse with both hands. But anyway, this horse is not ready to go yet. We need to get it moving above 1322 in the um, in the gold, and then I think you'll be you know far better. Uh, you have a better chance of seeing the market move uh, quite a bit. Regarding the grain markets, folks, we've got a um, we've got this new moon coming up here on the 13th, which I believe will be next uh, Monday. Da, 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 da. Next, it's going to be Wednesday. Next Wednesday, so Tuesday. Wednesday, we're going to probably have Norm Winsky on then. He usually likes to come on around that time, and we'll see. I'm not sure whether wheat has bottomed yet, Mr. Z, on a fundamental basis. Uh, well, what am I talking about fundamentals? I was talking to Simon yesterday, and we hit that magic number in a Christmas uh, corn yesterday at uh, 399 and a quarter. We're now trading around 404. Uh, he was he was marginally buying yesterday. And cover, we were he was covering shorts from that from the uh, the new moon where we had the triple top up well the the butterfly pattern three drive pattern up there so he was covering the shorts and beans wheat and uh, we went along the oil because the oil was acting the strongest of the group but it probably uh, very, very close to a bottom. You know, it's down 40 cents from its high, and that equals the last break that we had before it went up. It made another new high. We're in the midst of a, of a very, very hot coming summer, folks, because, uh, you know, this this summer started in, um, what, well, it actually doesn't start till June 21st, but, you know, the spring was extremely hot with Indiana temperatures. Uh, my sister was reporting to me daily that it was 90 degrees, and that was unusual. Hadn't had that been that hot since 1937. So that's 70 some years, and maybe that's a 70, 70, 80 years. Maybe that's a, a big cycle. I don't know. But when it's that hot that early, that usually means you're going to have some hot times during June and July. And if you don't get any rain, then you got problems because corn needs a lot of rain, as do the soybeans. So this is just starting, and we hardly go a year where we don't get at least one or two crop failures, and that's what we're going to, you know, try to be uh, looking at. That's the the key to 
to be watching this. Let's just take a quick look at, you know, what we were watching in this week because it, it had such a really nice pattern. I mean, it was not as if it was trying to hide anything from anybody because uh, this just has nothing to do with the fundamentals. You know, we were right up to that 78% level. And, uh, you know, it stopped right on the money, uh, you know, within one half cent of the exact number. And it's it's broken 40 cents, you know, from the high. So uh, it went through that good support that we thought was going to be there. And what it did was it went down and matched the leg in, in, in swing five, which takes you down to the 540 level. So it dropped over 40 cents right at that level. That's why Cy was taking a look at it at that level because you're still buying higher bottoms. There's no question about it. You had the 135 there back on the full moon or the, the new moon before, and then boom, up into the full moon and boom, down again. So we're going to see what happens to it. But I would certainly be taking profits in the shorts uh, of corn, wheat, or beans if you've done that. That's what I was uh, trying to alert people with the videos and things that we sent out each day to tell us whether these things are going on. Or not, but there's a big difference between the old crop beans, you know, and the new crop beans. Look at new crop beans, folks. These have been the ones that have been the um, they're the weakest because they're the ones that have been harvested, and we're selling them all over the world now. But those came all the way down to the uh, uh, back to that ten dollar level, a little below the ten dollar level already, which is a seventy eight percent level. So that's into that area, which should be. Uh, pretty good support. But if we break below 992 in those uh, July beans, that would be a very negative thing to happen. But right now, it doesn't look like that is the way that it is going to happen. We saw the same thing in the Christmas corn. And I want to bring this up because uh, we'll get this up here. Take a look at it. You'll notice that uh, we were looking for the support on this first move down to come in around the uh, 406 level. But with the gap down yesterday, we lowered that down to the uh, 60, 78% level, which was uh, three, uh, $4 a bushel. We got to 399 and a quarter. Yeah, we're trading a tad bit higher than that. But there was a small cycle due at that point. Like there were actually two of them coming in there. There was a 25-day cycle and a 50-day cycle. You see how they're overlapped? That's what I was doing back in the 70s uh, and the 60s with Hearst Book. That was called, uh, these were called nominal cycles when you have a 25 and a 50. And when they came together like that, that was called, um, oh, shucks, started with an S. Oh, I can't remember. Somebody, one of you smart guys can remember. Uh, it was, it, it was, they were coming together, not Confluence or anything like that, but doggone it, I can't remember the name of that. <laughs> Another senior moment sneaking me by. I'll, I'll remember it in a little bit. Uh, but it was started with an S. Anyway, when they when they came together like that, that meant that it was more powerful, and that's what in fact uh, happens when you when you look at some of these things. So, but we know right now they're they're still acting weak. So I think we've got a chance to to look at these coming in next week, and they'll be a little better to uh, take a uh, better chance of uh, of seeing what they're going to be doing. So let's it. Okay, we'll take a little break here. Eight seven seven nine two seven six. That's close, but not it. 877-927-6648. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. EverBank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank Bank is a member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. TFNN has put together the finest programming lineup each trading day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected financial minds in the nation to educate traders and investors. 
On Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we broadcast eight hours a day starting at 9 a.m. as Larry Pesavento kicks us off with Trade What You See. Tuesdays and Thursdays, we broadcast 11 hours. Get an early and healthy start to your day as Nico and Paige bring you Living a Primal Lifestyle. Then catch Andy Hecht at 5 p.m. with the Commodities Hour following the Tom O'Brien Show. Swim lessons from TD Ameritrade, Think or Swim, is now at 11 a.m., followed by Basil Chapman at 12 noon. See the TFNN program lineup via the link on the front page of TFNN.com to get a complete overview of our TFNN shows and hosts and keep TFNN's Tiger TV tuned in on your mobile device, PC, or Mac for the latest financial news and information throughout the broadcasting day. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, Trade LABU or LABD. Directions Daily SP Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, brought to you by Nadex, next on TFNN. Okay, we're back, folks, and the memory kicked in there thanks to uh, Mr. M in the room reminded me of Synergy. It actually was called Synchronicity. There were four tenants. There was uh, nominality, principality, synchronicity, and I can't remember the fourth one. But uh, uh, that that's not important because actually they 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 were proved to be not correct. They worked really great for three years. That's why that uh, the uh, people that had that service, um, well, you know, did really well for for three four years. But then after seventy four, it all, all they started to vibrate back and forth. And Gertrude Shirk, who was running the foundation for the study of cycles. You know, was pretty much uh, pretty much spot on uh, that saying that it was astrological. That they really felt that that was the same thing. Unfortunately, uh, Mr. Dewey passed away, and it was never carried through by very much. And not many people. Well, there's a lot of people do financial astrology, but there's no one in the news doing it. And that's the main thing. I've always believed that sometime before my career is over, whenever that'll be, that there'll be a segment on CNBC or Bloomberg about financial astrology, and it'll all be related on mathematics. And it won't come from a guy in Tucson, Arizona. It'll come from a guy from uh, MIT or Harvard or, you know, someplace like that that's got the academia on his side. Because I, I do this empirically. I just look to see what I see going on. And that's pretty much it. If you'll look at the uh, chart that I just posted for the tre Treasury bonds, this is the one we were looking at for that bottom to come in right around that 143 level. That was a 382 retracement. And here again, you notice that it's not screaming out of here. And I think that's another reason why we can believe that there's not a whole lot of new buyers, you know, coming into this market, uh, uh, at least from the way we the way we look at it from this level. But, well, you know, that could certainly change without any trouble at all. I, I did think, you know, someone's mentioned the fact that, uh, you know, we're watching the um, uh, cotton, which we almost never trade cotton, which is the understate understatement of the year. But we were making a prediction on cotton a few weeks ago and uh, for our good friend Simon Lee, and we were saying that the cotton should get up to that between uh, 90 and 94, and we topped on a high tick at 96.60. That was on a big short curving rally. We're now trading at around 90, I believe, uh, in the cotton, but that completed several A, B, C, D patterns up into that area, and that's really all that was, was trying to do. It has nothing to do with the fundamentals. This is all technical. They happen to be lined up perfectly that way, but now what we'll be watching is what their retracement's going to be in the cotton market to see if it's going to continue, you know, after a normal retracement, because sometimes bull markets, you know, they'll last uh, many, many years. As we know, we've seen in the stock market since May the, uh, since March the uh, 5th, 
of uh, 2009, we've been going straight up, and so we're still going up. So we'll watch these as we as we get through here uh, this morning, looking at some of the others. Um, one other person asked a question, and that was about the um, about coffee. Uh, you know, that's been a, been acting pretty nicely. Uh, we, we had a pretty big move in coffee. Uh, if you're in the coffee, I'm not in coffee, but you know, we pulled right down to a 78% level down there at that 116 and change. We got up to 123, which is quite a bit. But the key was that we went down and took out that double bottom, and the whole world was bearish. And immediately the next day, the market gapped up. Well, that's a that's one of the key signs of a false breakout or a bear trap or a bull trap when you see something like that happen. Because if the market gets completely oversold, you're looking at a market that's going to, you know, really, you know, rock and roll. And you certainly want to be able to uh, take advantage of it if you're able to act quickly on some of these things. But the, the beans are still coming down a little bit. And so I still think we have time because of that lunar cycle that's in there. It's been acting so nicely, you know, like the old commercial used to say, don't fool with Mother Nature. And I think that's probably uh, the key thing to uh, to pay attention to that that's what it looks like anyway now uh, remember we, we were talking about the euro yesterday quite a bit because we we felt very strongly that the dollar index has made some type of a of a major top in here so we want to try to find a place where we can uh, possibly hold on i've got a question coming in here um oh the mexican tariffs are getting into the hog market well that'll only last very a very short period of time because People get hungry no matter where they are. But let's take a quick look here at this uh, at this euro because we're at a relatively critical level here in the euro this morning. Uh, we're making a 61% retracement of the low back on uh, June the 1st. Uh, that's also a nice little ABCD pattern. So it should be pretty strong support here at this 16, uh, 116.66 and the number of... Uh, of Satan, whatever that means. Anyway, we'll look, just keep an eye on that one too because it's very important. Remember that dollar index, we've had a big move in that dollar index and uh, it has been setting up there. Let's just get up so you can see it's been very, very overbought and I don't believe that this is going to be corrected by just uh, one or two days. I believe you're going to have to have a pretty significant correction here in this dollar index which should take the euro you know, somewhere back to 120 possibly. But, um, you know, we had eight straight weeks up in the dollar index, and then we had that uh, doji foam form there, and that was also a double top with that October high. So that's telling me that that euro ought to find some support. It might not be where we are right now, but it ought to be pretty close. So kind of can't, can't keep an eye on that one. That's one that's got some uh, – has a very, very low risk potential for a pretty good rally to look at. And, of course, to watch these bonds, if they do rally out of here – um, there's nothing bullish about those bonds on a long-term basis, folks. We've been in a bear market for well over 18 months in that bond market, and this is the first really strong rally we've had in a long time, and that's nothing more than short covering. So sort of pay attention to that one. That's a really interesting one to uh, to watch. That's at least the way it looks like from a technical standpoint is, is the way I see it. So we'll, someone's asked a question about the silver. I'll tell you, silver's like the doggone gold, folks. It just can't get out of its own way. It's got a lot of really nice stuff in here. Take a look at silver. Uh, we got down to uh, 1638 again last night. Uh, we're, we're hugging that line. Uh, we haven't taken it out yet, but it's a 135 pattern. The bad part is it hasn't come out of here. You know, why hasn't the train left the station? And that's the question that I'm asking. I would rather buy this one on strength than to try to well, you could buy it here and certainly don't have to risk very much, but it's not acting properly from a cyclical standpoint. Every time we've had these cycle bottoms, they come out of here very, very quickly. Look at the bottom last July. Look at the bottom in December. And look at the bottom in May. They uh, they came out of there pretty strong. We're not coming out of here this strong. And that, that's a, that, that bothers me. And, uh, you know, so that's, what, that's my two cents worth. If it starts up, I think I'll put my wagon on it and strap the saddle. But uh, until that happens, it doesn't really look like it's ready to uh, really move to the upside. It's just not acting like a really bull market should be after a major cycle bottom like that, if, in fact, it was a major cycle bottom. We've had one other question. Oh, my gosh, a break already. Just take a look at the uh, – this is the uh, banking index. Um, this is another – you know, it's been under uh, – over 
overbought for quite some time. Then we became oversold, and now we're we're back up to a 61% retracement of the D leg in that. So it's another one that keeps hanging in there, you know, relatively well to see if it's going to, uh, you know, make those uh, make those levels and all. The Nasdaq is still extremely strong. It's the leader of the pack. Continues. I guess it will never go down. It'll be the first one in the history to never go down. But we've seen those before, and uh, history does have a tendency to rewrite the books occasionally. Right now, the ones I would take a very close eye on today is watch the crude oil down there around that 64 and change, uh, 6416, 6400. That's going to be real interesting to watch. And keep an eye on this euro at the uh, 11666 level. That's another one, and the Canadian dollar is going wacko. So I don't know where that's going, but it sure is moving big. 877-927-6648. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics including gold, silver, platinum, copper, the XAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for The Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find The Gold Report under Investment Newsletters. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and I wanted to post the chart of that Canadian dollar up in here because this has had a real bearish bias, and in the last few weeks, it has actually changed, and today we've had a really big move. I mean, volatility in the Canadian dollar versus U.S. dollar is much higher than it is with the euro or any of the others. So uh, something big is happening there. Whether it's related to the crude oil or not, I'm not sure. I don't know if it's related to tariffs or not. So all I know is this thing looks stronger than it should be. So there's no reason to stand in front of that freight train. Right now, it looks like it's got a 132.50 handle 
written all over it, which would be nothing more than a larger ABCD pattern in here. We've already destroyed the 78% level, so I'm assuming that we're going to continue higher from this level. But it is very um, unusual to see this type of a move in the Canadian when the others are not moving uh, nearly uh, that much. So watch it. I still think uh, the easier one to trade is the uh, the the uh, euro, but watch that one also. Just we'll just keep an eye on it just to see what it does for overall looking. But we're trading at 130.30 now in that Canadian dollar. Uh, which is uh, you know very very interesting. Still at 16.66 in the in the, the uh, euro, but hasn't moved much. So those are the ones that you want to watch uh, very very closely. And uh, remember, um, we have a uh, holiday atmosphere in the exchanges today. The you know, all this week and all through the summer because of the fact that people are working less hours, they leave early and stuff. The volume is way down. That's why you need to use stops because they can run these markets really fast. You can see how quickly the NASDAQ moves when it gets in the, in, in the groove, and it's usually in the groove all the time. So uh, watch it very, very closely as we go through some of these uh, markets uh, today. Uh, the grains will be interesting next week, of course, and, and we'll have some fun with those also. And um, we have a, a break. Well, we've got the show ending up right now, and what we'll do is we'll see you folks on the flip side tomorrow. So from the offices of Duke and Duke, 100 South Broad Street, we'll see you tomorrow, 877-927-6648. Folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks!